diabetes. Diabetes affects all age groups, but it's most prevalent among adults over age 20. Diabetes is a common medical condition affecting an estimated 25.8 million people in the United States. Even more alarming, over 25% of all adults age 65 or older have diabetes. This means that one out of every four senior citizens is affected by this disease. Because this disease is so prevalent, medical professionals have an obligation to learn more about how it affects our patients. This allows us to provide better care for these patients and identify potential problems earlier, leading to more effective treatment. What is diabetes? Diabetes is a problem generally characterized by too much sugar in the bloodstream. According to the American Diabetes Association, normal glucose levels before a meal should be between 70 and 130. Blood sugars that are consistently higher than these levels can lead to a diagnosis of diabetes. In order to fully understand what diabetes is, we have to dig a little deeper to discover why there is too much sugar in the bloodstream. Where does the sugar come from? Why is it in the bloodstream? Where does it go? These are all very important questions regarding diabetes. When we eat food, particularly carbohydrates such as bread, sugar, sweets, flour, pasta, rice, etc., those items are broken down in our digestive tract into water and sugar. Sugar is needed by every cell in the body. The cells use the sugar as fuel to perform their jobs. But sugar cannot just enter the cells of the body all by itself. It has to have a key to be let into the cells. That key is called insulin. Insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas, located in your abdomen. When you eat carbohydrates, your brain tells your pancreas to secrete more insulin. In healthy people, the pancreas produces insulin and sends it into the bloodstream. That insulin meets up with those sugar molecules in your bloodstream made from the carbohydrates that you ate. When the sugar arrives at the cell that needs fuel, it will use the insulin key to unlock the cell so that it can enter. But diabetes describes a condition in which the sugar in the bloodstream cannot enter the cells of the body. There are two specific reasons that blood sugar cannot enter the cells. Poor production or insulin resistance. Diabetes causes high blood sugar levels because the sugar is trapped outside the cells where it can't do any good. In the meantime, the cells are starving for energy. With diabetes, either the pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin, which is a production problem, or the cells don't recognize the insulin key, which is called insulin resistance. Another way of thinking about it is this. There are no keys to unlock the doors with a production problem, or the keys don't fit, which is insulin resistance. Some patients have both problems. This can make the disease very hard to manage. How is it treated? Doctors will prescribe treatment for people with diabetes. The treatment will depend on what the doctor thinks the cause of the diabetes is. If the problem is insulin production, the most common source of diabetes, the doctor may tell the patient to limit the amount of carbohydrates the patient eats to reduce the sugar molecules released into the bloodstream. Patients may also be advised to lose weight and increase exercise to manage their blood sugar levels. These actions are designed to make the pancreas production more effective. But if the pancreas production is still too low, the patient will need another source of insulin, usually by taking pills or insulin injections. Can it be prevented? There is a genetic component to diabetes. 
Those with close family members who have diabetes have a greater than average chance of developing the disease. But there are steps patients can take to reduce their risk of developing diabetes. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle is important in limiting your risk of developing diabetes. Regular exercise helps keep all the cells of the body healthy so they can recognize the insulin key. But maintaining a healthy diet is the single best prevention strategy. Remember how the pancreas has to produce insulin when you eat carbohydrates? Well, an excessively high carbohydrate diet, including a lot of snacks and sweets, over a long period of time makes the pancreas work overtime. Your body needs carbohydrates for energy, but too many carbohydrates can make the pancreas work much harder than it should. By wearing out the pancreas with this type of a diet, the pancreas may not be able to produce insulin as effectively later in life. By maintaining a healthy diet, the pancreas is able to produce adequate amounts of insulin throughout your lifetime, and your cells get the energy they need to work. Does it affect the body? Sugar is needed by every cell in the body for energy. If sugar is not able to enter the cells, the cells won't be able to work well. If left untreated, diabetes can affect the body in many different ways. The sugar that's not able to enter the cells and remains trapped in the bloodstream will coat the inside of the arteries it travels through. As this sugary substance flows through the arteries, it coats the inside surface of the arteries, making them brittle. Think of cake frosting left out for a few hours. The sugar makes the frosting stiff but sticky. This is the same type of substance that's flowing through the arteries. This keeps the arteries from being able to expand when the heart pumps harder, like during exercise. Because the arteries cannot expand, it causes high blood pressure to develop. Kidney damage can also occur as large protein molecules punch holes through the delicate internal structures of the kidneys. Patients may notice vision changes as the sugar coats the delicate arteries and nerves of the eye. Because sugar molecules are heavy, Gravity pulls the excess sugar down into the feet and the legs. The hardening of the arteries we talked about earlier is even more extreme in the legs and the feet of diabetic patients. This can interfere with healthy blood reaching every cell in the legs and the feet, causing sores to develop or resulting in tissue death. Wounds will be harder to heal because of the decrease in available blood supply. Wounds that don't heal can become infected. The nerves are also affected in diabetic patients. The excess sugar molecules can coat the nerve fibers, keeping signals from being transmitted to and from the brain. This can result in a loss of feeling in certain areas of the body, particularly the feet. This condition is called neuropathy. With these complications, patients can develop wounds on their feet that they are not even aware of that may become difficult or impossible to heal. These wounds may then become infected, leading to amputation. Patients should be encouraged to keep their blood sugar levels controlled through diet, exercise, and medications to limit the complications that may develop. Patients should also check their feet daily for signs of injury or developing sores to ensure prompt, effective treatment. Why are they always hungry? Diabetics may complain of being hungry. They may sneak food or eat lots of snacks. Some of this may be habit. Patients may be used to a high-carbohydrate diet and feel deprived. But there's also another reason diabetic patients crave sweets. Remember how the cells need sugar? 
The cells will then tell the brain to send sugar. The brain will interpret this as a craving and seek carbohydrates to satisfy this craving. It's important to understand that the patients are craving carbs because their cells are starving, but what they eat will not necessarily satisfy the craving because the sugar they take in still cannot enter the cells without insulin. That additional sugar will remain in the bloodstream instead of entering the cells, which could cause additional damage to blood vessels, nerves, and organs. And the cells will still send starvation signals to the brain, which will then trigger more cravings. What does all this mean to me? As healthcare workers, you will probably be caring for diabetic patients frequently in your career. Diabetic patients may be on a specific diet and should be encouraged to eat all of their food to maintain healthy blood sugar levels. However, they should not be given additional food unless permission is obtained from the nurse. Additional food can cause blood sugar surges that can be difficult to control. Skin should be monitored for sores frequently. Diabetic patients often develop sores that are difficult to heal. Safety counts. Make sure the patient has shoes on when walking and clear the walkways of any potential hazards. Please note, slipper socks do not protect the feet from injury and should not be used in place of shoes. Blood sugar levels can change rapidly in diabetics. The patient should be monitored for signs of high or low blood sugar levels. Excessive urination, hunger, thirst, and fatigue are signs of prolonged high blood sugars, also known as hyperglycemia. Low blood sugar levels can be a very dangerous condition, resulting in loss of consciousness, prolonged coma, and even death in severe cases. This condition can be reversed if caught early. Signs of low blood sugar are confusion, headache, sweating, blurred vision, anxiety, tremors, weakness, and emotional changes. Any of these symptoms should be reported to the nurse right away. Understanding what diabetes is, how it affects the body, and recognizing common signs and symptoms will help the patient manage their disease more effectively. Together, patients and healthcare workers can manage diabetes effectively, minimizing complications. The End Need scrubs for your new career? Visit foryouruniforms.com and enter the code CNA video for a special discount. Need additional resources? For your CNA has what you need. With practice tests, an online workbook, instructional videos, practice kits and supplies, and our very own skills book with step-by-step -step instructions, you will feel confident when you take the CNA exam. Visit foryourcna.com today. Continuing education for CNAs are called in-services. In-services are now offered online at foryourcna.com.